What's up everybody, it's Kyoto and welcome back to another SMT DX2 video. Today we're going to be looking at the new Jiraiya Demons that are coming into the game just shortly after this video comes out. So I'm going to be going from the 1 stars all the way up to the 5 stars and explaining their skills, the archetypes. I'm going over the stats and also like their weaknesses and the nulls, drains, repels and all that. And maybe some implications on how you can use them in teams. So we're going to start off here with Kuro Poker, or I don't even know really, someone can really correct me um, in the comments section if they wish, but I am not going to go checking out these names ahead of time. In any case, looking at the stats here, you're probably going to be using this as a buffer or a debuffer. Um, Drain Light might come in handy, I don't know, Sukukaja, probably there if you need to keep up that kind of buff, but otherwise the other stats are kind of just whatever. I mean, there's no light, and that's okay. It's relatively fast. It has some vitality, so it's not going to die like extremely early, I guess. But it's not really the greatest thing. You probably don't need Divine Brands on it, though, so you could build other things. Then moving on to Kodama here. Two star has a weakness to fire, null to force. I think that's okay. I'm um, usually using these lower star units for very specific things. Um, it take a little bit longer to upgrade, but I guess they are very specific. They tend to not have the greatest skills, but they tend to have like the more cheaper spammable ones, so that could be a thing. I mean, fast recovery is in here, so that's one of the innate skills that could work out. Seems to be force based. Um, also has Hama, so I guess that could work out in some situations. Repel force could actually be a thing to work, or maybe even back attack, so that could be a thing. Or even heals, but I mean, DR is not that great, so probably not so much. Moving on to Hua Po, 3 star. So it's looking like this is going to be a dodge based unit. Um, dodge Mage, so kind of like a weaker Garuda in a sense, has a weakness to lightning, but no fire, so maybe that could work out. No, Alec is also on here for Teal, so you can just cover that, which could be a really good unit here in that case. I mean, the agility is really high, magic is really high, so. We could play around with that, but um, probably going to be used for your fast teams, and I'm not sure how strong it's going to be, though it does have like Maragi and Agi, so I guess you could go like a speedster, and then transfer like Fire Pierce or something, because that could maybe work. In any case, moving up to Quancha here, another 3 star. Um, only thing it has a weakness to Force, which isn't too big, at least in PvP, but looking at this unit is actually kind of crazy, because... Infernal Mask as the purple makes it pretty interesting here. And Insanity as one of the innate skills. This could be one of the really powerful ailment uh, three stars here. So kind of like the opposite to your Kin Mammon in a sense. Has Mahama, Toxic Sting. Toxic Sting can go really well if you're using Nurgle. So that gives the crit chance. Um, looking at this, Null Force to cover that, but you're probably going to go for Infernal Masks most likely. I mean, I guess you could go for Binding Cry in a sense, or even like the cheaper Mind Break. Like, this is a really aggressive unit, and I think that could be pretty useful. I mean, look at that luck, too, at 176. It's, it's really, really high up there, especially if you buff it up with some Mitama. So, man, I think Quancha really powerful three star that might be able to change the meta i mean insanity plus infernal mask pretty solid now looking at titan so it has muscle punch that's a new skill that we have and then also it has a unique one unyielding phalanx so that could be interesting bloody glee you're probably gonna need uh fizz pierce then because this is a fizz based unit but it seems to be pretty Nice. Uh, an upgraded version of Osei, in a sense, as a 4-star. And it has Null Fizz as your teal, so that could be a reason to go teal. I mean, the other option would be Titano Machia there, or even Charge if you're trying to go for some big damage. So this is like some really good stuff. Uh, purple, I feel like, is one of the weaker ones, because even Strength Amp 2 has some implications, just more overall, in a sense. This will crit pretty often, because Bloody Glee... And then looking at Muscle Punch here, it has damage that's based on your Fizz Defense. So um, you can build it for Fizz Defense instead of Fizz Attack if you ever choose that. Looking at the Vitality, looks like it's pretty good, so you're going to be relatively tanky. Strength is pretty high up there at 190. I mean, anything close to 200 is something you should be looking at. And uh, 
no weaknesses. So that's something to point out. That uh, seems like a relatively squishy unit otherwise, but the HP is way up there. And because you have a muscle punch, you can go for the Fizz Defense build. Seems like a really, really tanky Fizz Damaging unit that can crit pass. I think this is going to be another good unit. Well, looking at Unyielding Phalanx here as a unique skill, while a demon with this skill is alive, all party members will receive the following effect. Reduce damage by 30% when Fizz Repel is pierced. So, I guess you just have like one Fizz Repel unit and that should just cover this, um, I guess, requirement. But I'm not sure how that will work out. But if anything, that sounds really awesome if everybody's reducing their damage by 30%. So that's like double Hekka in a sense. So you might not even use Hecka Tunkeris anymore. This has no weaknesses, you can build it for Fizz Defense, you can make it really tanky, and if your Repel Fizz gets pierced um, by, you know, anything in PvP, which is very popular, then it's probably gonna work really well. I'm actually kind of excited to see how this one will work out, and then leveling it isn't too expensive either. Gives you that 10% accuracy, which is mainly what you're looking for. Um, the Fizz damage is, you know, it's, I guess that's good too. Hybrid skills, that's what they're trying to do now. Moving on to, I don't even want to um, pronunciate that because someone can go ahead and do that for me if they so wish. Otherwise, this looks like a hybrid unit for um, Alec and Augie. So um, it has its own unique skill, Earth Sacrifice. Let's check that out just real quick. Um, so basically when this unit gets downed, um, I, I'm not sure how good those types of chain skills are except for Ixtabs because it insta-kills. But, so basically when you're down for this unit, um, you get Tetracarn and you get a triple buff, but it's only for one turn. So I'm not sure if that's going to be good. You're usually going to be getting hit by AoEs, but if you can kind of like avoid AoE damage and just have this guy die, then like maybe it's okay, but it only lasts for one turn, so I don't see it being that great. And it has to die like on the first AoE move or you know single target one, so I can't see it being amazing. Um, it does have Rukamja on yellow though, so that could be a thing. Or a cheaper Maragion. And I guess, I mean like really, Elect Boost not going to be helping too much. Maybe drain Elect if you're going for the Rama stuff. But then again, looking at stats here. Relatively high magic, but it's not high enough to be considered a great mage. And HP is not really there to boost it to make it, you know, tanky-ish. So I can't see this unit being that good um, compared to the other ones that we just saw, really, because those other ones seem pretty good, even the three-star. So, moving on to the main thing that everybody's looking at, Gog Magog. Orcus's best friend, um, as they say, because it has some pretty good stats. I mean, look at these attributes here. You know, resistance fizz, I mean, that's okay. It doesn't really do too much. But it has three weaknesses, so that's an extra 15% reduction in AoE damage if you have that with Orcus. Um, so basically, that's Hecaton Karras' buff. Except Hecaton Karras technically gets like, I don't know, 25% because it also has two weaknesses on top of the 15% it gives. But I guess it has to be um, alive for that, so you lose a lot more when Heka dies. In any case here, it does have... Earthquake, which is a new skill as well. So it does Fizz damage, which makes me think that this unit will probably want Fizz Pierce as well. And it has relatively high power, 150, so seems pretty solid for a 7 MP skill. So it's like almost spammable because it's 7 MP. I mean, you're not using it on the first turn, but this is a very slow unit with 62 agility, basically around Hekas. And the damage here is based on Fizz defense, so you're building this to take on those Fizz Damagers, um, as usual, because, you know, this game said, Evasion's not working, it's not consistent, so we have to go with the straight-up Fizz Defense units, because now that's all we can do to stop these, like, crazy things like Guan Yu coming out. I mean, Guan Yu's good, but Masakato is still one of the biggest killers out there. So, yeah, mm-hmm, the game kind of messed up, doesn't want to nerf these broken units and they're trying to fix it by adding new things and it's not really working um so we'll see how fizz defense damage works in any case leveling up earthquake isn't that difficult since it is its own transferable skill you're gonna have to like make a few of them 
I guess. And I'm not sure how the fusion path is going to be just yet, but it seems okay to just level it up. It's relatively strong as is though, so like I said, not as necessary. Looking at the unique skill here though, Final Opposition activates the following chain effect when an own weak point is attacked. Um, it seems pretty strong with this. 15% especially with its high HP at 1400 base and then vitality 222 then there's strength up there too I just want to point that out 212 and I mean luck is already really high up there too so it's not getting critted that often this is a crazy crazy defense unit especially as an anti-fizz even though it's not really an anti-fizz with um, repel or drain so that'll be interesting well I mean I guess you could go teal but that's a big maybe because Alilot isn't really that meta anymore, and I'm not sure if it will be, but maybe it'll come back. So we'll have to see about that one. In any case, Final Opposition heals own HP by 15% and enters a state of might. So that'll go really well with your Earthquake. Or if you're using red, which is probably what I'm thinking of using, you get Muscle Punch. So that gives you another attack. So I think that maybe red or even teal could be the way to go. Death counter, I, I'm not sure. I mean, like, you might have to build it for strength at that point instead of defense. But um, it could be okay as long as you have that Fizz Pierce. But then again, there are those Rama Masakado teams or, like, Rama Mother Harlot. Uh, but it's not like Mother Harlot is using Fizz attacks unless you mute. But maybe mute will also be the new meta thing because a lot of people aren't covering that. They're usually covering charm and then, like, maybe, maybe bind. But that's not even that big a thing anymore. So bind and mute. Pretty good ailments right now, and I think that's going to stop a lot of these things. But, Final Opposition, relatively good skill to level up, plus 20 to Vitality, on top of it being already freaking high. So, yeah, I'm pretty excited for Gog Magog as a stall unit, and we're going to see how that works against the Moscato, Guan Yu, and I guess Huang Di is coming back too, so we'll see. Overall, Jiraiya looks like a pretty solid race. Um, it's going to shake up some of the meta. I can't imagine it putting Fizz DPS units out of the meta though, so... Um, they're probably going to have to find some way to nerf, or maybe another unit that is totally anti-Fizz, because these aren't really doing it. At least not directly, so we'll see how that goes. But they seem pretty good either way, and we'll see with some of these sneakers from the 3-star and 4-star category. So that has been my analysis of the Jiraiya race. Hope you all like it. Let me know what you think about them in the comment section below. Let's have some debate about it going on. Maybe you guys have some new implications or ideas about how to use them. Because the stats are like relatively boosted compared to the previous units we've had. So I don't know. It seems like they're just going to increase the base level of stats on these newer guys. In any case, I'll see you guys in the next one. Later. Later.